Hey, everybody. Today we're debating whether or not Jesus is a Muslim, and we are starting right now with the yes side in particular. Shoaib, thanks for being with us. The floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. So, not a quite, the topic is, uh, is Jesus a Muslim, right? Uh, when we go to Quran, for instance, Quran chapter 27, verse 91, uh, Prophet Muhammad himself said, wa umirutu anakuna min al -Muslimin, that have been commanded to be of the Muslims. Now, what comes into play is people don't understand the notion of what the word Muslim actually, uh, you know, means because people have romanized it into English. So when somebody says this guy is a Muslim, they just think he's a, you know, a concept of Sunni Shia and that makes a person a Muslim. That is not the case. It's actually been romanized, which in Arabic means to subject or submit yourself to God. So somebody who submits to God is a Muslim. And then whoever submits to God is part of what do we call the faith called Islam. That is the act of submission. So Quran chapter 27 verse 91 shows us how Muhammad claims to submit, to have been commanded to submit to God. And it didn't start from him. We saw in Quran chapter 2 verse 131, Abraham himself, when God asked him to submit, and he said, I submit to the Lord of the worlds. Now, when you go to James chapter 4 verse 7, as uh, the Christian brothers can actually uh, testify for themselves, it says you should submit yourselves to God and reject the devil, right? Uh -huh, so that uh, and the devil will flee from you. Now, submitting or subjecting yourself to God stands in the same instance of what a Muslim is. You submit your will to the one and only God. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 133, it says, Or were you witnesses when death appeared to Jacob, when he said to his sons, what will you worship after me? They said, we will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, the one God, for we are submitters to him, right? So submitting to God automatically makes one um, what we call modern day, we use the word Muslim. But when we say Muslim, it doesn't mean a sectarian Muslim or somebody who follows the Hadith concept of Islam. That is not what is uh, Muslim denotes. And again, if we go to Quran chapter 3, verse 64, this is in, in, in a simple nutshell. This is what we invite all the people of the book. The messenger was asked to say, oh, people of the book, let's come to equal term between us and you that we shall not worship except Allah. That is one God. Neither shall we associate anything with him to say he has partners, his trinity, his this, his that. No, nor shall we take each other as lords because he is the Lord of the universe. It's sufficient for us. So we don't need to take each other as lords. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are submitters, which in actual sense in Arabic, we will say Muslimun, right? So which means Muslims. Now, when we pay attention to how the word had been coined in order to, 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 to sound like Muslim is an English word, Coming back, we have to understand a Muslim is the one who submits to one God, who, who actually submits his will to God. So he does the will of God. He follows the commandments of God, right? So this uh, believer or this Muslim who submits to God must also submit to, uh, 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 submit to the words of God, that is the books of God, and also believe in his messengers, believe in his prophets, and, uh, and uh, whatever follows. But to take these criteria, these five criteria, first of all, I'm going to deal with, which is believe in one God and also the will of God, the commandments of God, and also believe in his messengers and his prophets. Now, when we take, for instance, Quran chapter 18, verse 110, these messengers, when they come, they tell you, you have to worship one God. Then the will of God, when we take Quran chapter 5, verse 110 to 111, we saw how Jesus submitted his will to God alone, and he does the will of God above. Now, the commandments of God also, Quran chapter 21, verse 27, clearly tells us the messengers do not precede God in word, but they act on his commands. So they follow only the commands of God, which shows they submit to God, which means they are inferior to God. Messengers, now as a messenger, we have somebody like Jesus also who is a messenger of God, submitting to the will of God. So if you go to Quran chapter 61, verse 6 of the Quran, he actually came to the children of Israel as a messenger and prophesied to them about a messenger to come after him. Now, as a prophet, Quran chapter 19, verse 30, he said he is a servant of God and that God has made him a prophet and has given him a book. Now, when you go, the concept of one God, for instance, if you go to the Bible, you go to Luke chapter 18, 
verse 19, where Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. You go to Mark 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 29 to 30, and Jesus answered him, The first of all commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And so goes up to verse 30, tells you you have to devote yourself entirely to God alone, none else. Mark chapter 12, verse 32, likewise tells you there is only one God, there is none but he. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, likewise. Luke chapter 4, verse 8, and then John chapter 5, verse 37, where he says, And the Father who sent me, he has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. So this Jesus as uh, the testimony of Jesus is what God has actually given him so that he can give to the people, which we I can actually see that Jesus is not God, neither is he anything people are claiming that he is God. So that means, which means he submits to a higher authority over him. Now, the will of God, John chapter 5, verse 30 clearly tells us that Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will. So Jesus didn't come to do his own will, but the will of the Father which sent him, right? So John chapter 14, verse 10, he tells us that believers uh, do not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. So Jesus was not speaking his own point of view or opinions, but the Father that dwell in me, he does the works. So he goes again, John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. He says, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. So anything Jesus actually have to speak to the people is based on the commandments of God. So we can see the will of God and also the commandments of God. And then we can see also Jesus being a messenger according to John chapter 8, verse 42. And John chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. I was not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. Then Luke chapter 4, verse 43 Likewise, he saying, he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the seat, uh, to the other cities. Also, therefore, I am sent, right? And he preached in the synagogue of Galilee. So, prophet, as a prophet, he is a prophet of Nazareth. According to John chapter nine verse seventeen, he they, he is a prophet. They said he is a prophet. And Matthew chapter twenty one verse eleven, the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Uh, of Galilee. Then we have Luke chapter 24, verse 19, and he said unto them what things they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. So Luke chapter 4, verse 24, he, Jesus said, Very I say unto you, no prophet is accepted is in own country, just as Jesus was not accepted by his people. So the five criteria I gave, which Jesus falls through as a prophet and then as a messenger, and then somebody who acts on the commandments of God. Uh, just as the verses I, I quoted. And then lastly, then he says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So Jesus was only submitting to the will of God above. And that is why we claim he is a Muslim as a Robanized word. But in Arabic, a Muslim means a submitter. So Jesus was only submitting to the will of God and none, uh, everything he's did he did wasn't from his own will by the will of god so that is the criteria Mohammed, over to you okay so uh to carry on from what my and uh, peace and blessings to everybody uh carrying on from what my friend said uh yes muslim the etymology of the word means one who has submitted his or her will to god so they follow and do what their the will of their lord uh the god of abraham now i know a lot of people uh have the understanding in the west that muslim is conflated with what Sunniism and Shia is. And yes, Jesus was not a Sunni and he was not a Shia, just like how Ibrahim was not a Sunni or a Shia. Uh, now, the problem is the burden in the West is for us to define what Muslim and who Allah is, because these are words that also came up in the debate earlier uh, due to the problem of Roman Romanizing the two respective words. This debate would actually not happen in the Middle East among Arabic speakers because the Arabic speakers will quickly agree that Jesus, yes, he's a submitter and that he did submit to God. Now, this debate is happening in the West is due to the ignorance and the Romanizing of these words. Now, uh, if you look into Job 22, 21, this is where I believe uh, Eliphaz was addressing Job. The verse says, uh, submit to God 
and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Now, if you take a look into the standard Arabic Bible, S-A-B, the standard Arabic Bible, in Arabic it says, Aslim lillah. وتصالح معه يأتيك يأتيك خيرون. So in in the, in the Quranic terms, it would be أولئك هم المفلحون. So, but the, what I'm trying to explain is that a this verse is apparent in the Quran, and the other thing is the word aslim, which is submit, which comes from the word Muslim. So someone who does aslam or uh, yuslim, someone who sorry in the past did aslam, he would be called a Muslim. So, and then you see the word lillah, which uh, I think Avery understands this. There's the al, which is the definite article, because it's submit to God. The alif is dropped, so technically it's aslim li Allah, just like in the Quran it says uh, hamd, la Allah alhamd. To God is the, uh, the 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 praise. So you can clearly see the word Muslim and the word Allah in the Arabic Bible. So these are words that already existed prior to Prophet Muhammad and prior to the Quran. Now. Uh, I'm going to quote the same verse that uh, my uh, my uh, colleague, uh, uh, my my friend and colleague, uh, quoted, which was John five thirty. I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is judge uh, just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So so it's very clear that Jesus has submitted his will back to God, and he's doing the will of the Lord. Now I personally do not. Don't act on my will. Just like how Shuaiba doesn't act on his own will. We are called Muslims. There, there are pleasures in the world that would be nice to indulge in. But if we do that, then we are removed from the grace, the purity, and the commandments of God. Uh, and thus we become deluded. This is the same as Jesus when he was tempted by the devil in the gospel, uh, when he was fasting. But Jesus held, uh, like held into the ropes of God and he did not delude from the path. Now, after one submits his will to God, for him to become a believer, they must uphold a certain degree and a certain standard for us submitters, or in Arabic Muslims, to, to be defined as a believer. And this oh, was defined seconds. in the Quran. In chapter 8, verse 2 to 4, it says, The believers are those are only those whom, when God is mentioned, their heart are fearful, and when his verses are recited to them, they increase in faith, and they rely on their Lord. The one who establishes the litany, or the prayer, and one from whom what, uh, what we have provided them, they disperse. Those are the true believers, for them are degrees at their Lord's. This statement alone defines Jesus' ministry, and the way he conducted himself as an example for the children of Israel on how to be a believer and a submitter to God's will. So uh, essentially, uh, a devout Christian can see that the teachings of what Christ taught in their Muslim counterparts, which logically concludes that Jesus himself uh, conducted and taught, was what the Quran also taught in a mannerism uh, uh, of, um, uh, I mean, yeah. in mannerism and the importance of humbleness. The Christian is recognizing that, sorry. The, he was on around that 12 minute mark, We're probably at about 13 and a half. That, right was, that, was, that was right around 13. Are you good there, Muhammad? Uh, so yeah, essentially the, the main point is that uh, you could see a lot of what uh, Christ taught as what a Muslim is in the Quran. So it, it concludes that uh, Jesus was teaching how to be a Muslim as he was a Muslim himself, or he's a Semitic. You got it. We're going to kick it over to David and Avery for their 13-minute opening as well. It's about a split. So it'll be about six and a half each. I do want to remind you folks, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many more debates coming up in the future. With that, thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours. Thank you, James. And uh, I'll probably give uh, Avery a little bit more time than I'm going to take. Uh, and thank you uh, again, Mohammed and Shuaib, for having this debate on such an important issue of disagreement between Christians and Muslims. Uh, this is actually very, very simple. According to Islam, a Muslim is someone who submits to Allah, but this is supposed to be the Allah of Islam. The Allah of Islam is the Allah that we read about in the Quran. Did Jesus submit to the Allah that we read about in the Quran? There are all kinds of directions we can go with this. Uh, we can point out things like uh, the Quran denies Jesus sacrificial death and resurrection, but Jesus said things like, 
For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus is laying down his life as a ransom for others. That's Mark 10, 45. And uh, there, there are tons of passages on Jesus saying that he's going to die on the cross and rise from the dead. Interestingly, some of them are passages that Shu'ev was quoting, where if he just keep reading, he would see all kinds of things that completely contradicts uh, Islam. So Shu'ev quotes the Gospels to prove his points, even though the points he's quoting, uh, even though the passages he's quoting thoroughly contradict Islam. So for instance, he quoted uh, Luke 19. Uh, if he kept reading to verses uh, 31 to 33, he would see, uh, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. So I, I, I kind of don't know what to do when people keep quoting passages where if you just keep reading, it completely, it completely destroys the point they're making. Uh, so there are tons of places where Jesus contradicts the Quran, and he therefore can't be submitting to the God who revealed the Quran. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to focus on one core issue that shows Jesus wasn't a Muslim. According to the Quran, the worst sin anyone can commit is shirk, associating a partner with Allah. Surah 19 says that the universe is about to rip apart when someone says that God has a son. It makes no sense to claim that Jesus was a devout Muslim prophet if he and everyone around him were committing the worst possible sin over and over again like a beating drum. It just doesn't make sense to call Jesus or his followers uh, Muslims. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And in Matthew 3, when Jesus comes out of the water, the Spirit of God descends as a dove, and a voice out of the heavens proclaims, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Notice the Father and the Holy Spirit together identify Jesus as the Son of God. Jesus repeatedly identifies himself as the Son of God. At his trial, for instance, in Mark 14, uh, uh, Shue was quoting Mark, uh, in Mark 14, the high priest asks Jesus at his trial, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus answers, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. They declared that this is blasphemy and that he, uh, he, has, to be, he has to be sentenced to death because of this. In Luke 1, the angel Gabriel calls Jesus the Son of God. In John 1, John the Baptist, who was a prophet according to both Christianity and Islam, says about Jesus, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. At the end of John 1, the apostle Nathaniel says to Jesus, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. In Matthew 16, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says that this was revealed. Jesus replies and says that this was revealed to Peter by God. So according to Jesus, God is the one who reveals to you that Jesus is the son of the living God. In Matthew 14, Jesus walks on water during a storm. After stepping into the boat, the wind stops and his disciples bow down and worship him, uh, crying out, you are certainly God's son. In John 11, Martha calls Jesus the Son of God. At his crucifixion, some of the Romans called Jesus the Son of God. Even demons would call Jesus the Son of God as he was casting them out of people and they were screaming. So the Father identifies Jesus as the Son of God. Jesus identifies himself as the Son of God. The Holy Spirit identifies Jesus as the Son of God. The angel Gabriel identifies Jesus as the Son of God. The prophet John the Baptist identifies Jesus as the Son of God. Jesus' apostles identify him as the Son of God. Martha identifies him as the Son of God. The Romans identify him as the Son of God. Demons identify him as the Son of God. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, pick a book over and over again. Jesus is called the Son of God, and our Muslim friends go to these very books to show that Jesus was a devout Muslim. Everyone <laughs> in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who could possibly identify Jesus as the Son of God identifies him as the Son of God. 600 years later, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, comes along and tells his followers that the worst possible sin anyone can commit is claiming to be the Son of God or calling someone the Son of God. So according to Islam, according to the Quran, is Jesus a Muslim, someone who submits 
to the Allah of the Quran? Obviously not. He's committing the worst possible sin over and over, and so were everyone around him. But our Muslim friends uh, have given us their perspective. So, uh, Avery, what do you think about their case? I think that uh, the, the case to prove that Jesus was a Muslim is interesting because uh, what we have here is we have the meaning of Muslim that's given to us is that is whoever submits their will to God, whoever submits themselves to God, whoever believes in his books and whoever, um, you know, follows his commands, believes in his command. You submit to these things, you submit to God, you are a Muslim. Well, if by that definition, if we're going with that, because I'm going to show you how ambiguous this is, uh, you know, one of the best Muslims, according to this definition that I could ever think of is Paul, the apostle. Paul, uh, being a Pharisee, uh, knew the scriptures, believed in the scriptures, submitted to the scriptures, submitted to God so much with so much zeal that uh, he went after uh, those who he thought were not submitting to the will of God and uh, committing shirk against God uh, by claiming that Jesus is the divine Messiah who died for our sins and rose again on the third day. So I believe that by this definition, Paul is uh, amongst the best of Muslims. If we're going just by someone who submits their will to God and submits to his books, his revelation and things of this nature, um, uh, not just Paul, but me, I, I, I guess I'm a Muslim. I believe in God. Uh, he's, he's, he's a, a triune, uh, uh, God infinite. And, uh, you know, there's no one, uh, beside him, no one other than him. Uh, and, and he is, uh, uh magnificent in everything that he is. I submit to him uh, in his revelations. I submit to his books, his commands. I am a Muslim. David, you're a Muslim. Uh, the, the 1300 people in this chat who are monotheists who submit their will to God, you're Muslims. So that's how ambiguous this is. And I don't think that they would agree with this. So if we're going to be, I mean, honest with what it is to be a Muslim, it's believing and submitting to the, a particular concept of God that we find described in the Quran, the God that uh, it begets not and nor is he begotten, the God who is not a father to anyone in any sense, uh, the, the God who um, has no children, has no partners, you know what I'm saying? The God who is not a trinity, the God who is absolutely singular in his essence, the a singular person. That's the God that you have to submit to uh, in order to, to be a Muslim specifically. And so now we have this, this case here. Well, okay, if that's really the definition, then let's see if we if Jesus, the Jesus of Nazareth, the first century Jew, the, the Messiah, historically lines up with that concept of God. Did he submit to the God who has no sons, to the God who is absolutely singular in his essence, to the God who uh, has, you know, uh, within himself, no one is, is with him, uh, no family or anything of this nature. Is that the God that Jesus believed in and submitted to? And ironically, as what was mentioned, um, our Muslim friends quote the Bible. They went to the Bible to substantiate this idea that Jesus is a Muslim. And the, and it, it's it's mind-boggling because the verses that they quote, as David said, literally destroy their position. Like, for example, uh, Mark chapter 12 was quoted, tw uh, verse 29, where Jesus says, you know, that there's only one God and things of this nature. Um, but earlier in Mark 12, starting at verse 1 to about 10, Jesus differentiates himself from the servants who are the prophets. It goes like this. He says, um, uh, 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 gives the parable of the vineyard, uh, the vineyard owner, and the vineyard owner sends his servants, who are the prophets, to the people who, that he loaned the land to, which is Jerusalem, which is Israel, the Jews. But they kept killing their, his servants. They kept killing the prophets, and he kept sending them and sending them. They kept killing them and abusing them and and rejecting them. Uh, but then it says here, uh, yet he had he still had one to send, and it says here. Uh, a beloved son. So notice that the son is distinct from the servants. Why? He said, my beloved son, finally, he sent to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. So Jesus, referring to himself, is the son who is distinct from the servants, the prophets, who is the heir 
of the Father, of God, the heir of all things, right? The one who will receive all things that God owns, including the prophets. So Jesus is, is, is identifying himself as the owner of the prophets, the one who inherits all things, creation and all. And this is who Jesus is saying he is in Mark 12. This absolute is this an Islamic teaching. Can you be a Muslim and claim that God is your father, that Allah is your father? Can you be a Muslim and claim that you are the son of Allah, the inheritor of Allah, the one who will receive all things that Allah owns and that you, including the prophets, that you own the prophets? Uh, th this is this. It's a tough it's a tough dilemma to be in. Um, so we're going we're showing how ambiguous this definition of Muslim was that was given to us, if we narrow it down, we know it's specifically about the Islamic God. And when we go into passages, John chapter five was quoted, for example, John five, these, these guys, they said it. The, we didn't quote these. They did. They said Jesus submits his will to the father in John chapter five. Absolutely. It's true. But guess what else he says? He says that the father shows the son all things that he does. So there's nothing that the father does without the son. Does Allah ever work, ever work alone? Does he always do things with the son? Guess what else? Jesus says that whatever the father does, that the son does also. Jesus says that he can do whatever Allah can do. Also in John 5, we haven't even left John 5 yet. There's so much more to get to. In John 5, he says that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. So my question would be, how do you honor Allah? Is it through worship? Is it through your through a uh, supplication? Jesus says that you have to honor him the same way you honor Allah. Is that Islamic? I don't think so. Well, time. Thank you very much. We're going to jump into the open dialogue. Thanks so much for being with us, folks. Don't forget to hit that like to let the YouTube algorithm know what to suggest more of to you. With that, gentlemen, the floor is all yours. Now, Avery, uh, just to, I want to put it back a little bit. You said that the term Muslim is ambiguous. Yes. Is, it is very ambiguous, especially in the Quran. God never says, uh, God says multiple times, all oh, believers, all oh, people of the book, all oh, uh, oh, disbelievers, all oh, uh, associators. So he never says all oh, Muslims because it is an ambiguous verse, uh, uh, ambiguous meaning where it covers many people. You're actually correct in the definition where anyone who is submitting to a monotheistic Lord, because there is only one God. So you want to play around with the words like father and Allah as if they're not equal, even though you have your definition of what a father is. Let's go with the Lord of the skies and the earth. Rabbu samawati wal ard. There's only one entity that created the skies and the earth. It created this entity. He created the human. He understands the human. He told the human, do this and don't do that. That is the Lord that we submit to. Now, our perspective and what he can do and what he can't do, this is where we're opening it up for debate. But this Lord that I defined is the Lord of Abraham. And anyone who submits to this Lord of Abraham and despite what associations they have with it, or they attach to him, or however they're viewing him in a certain perspective, that is changing their theology. But it doesn't change how many gods there is. There's only one. So yes, you are right. You and David, if you are submitting to the Lord of the skies and the earth, created this world, you by definition is a Muslim. So you 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 concede it. By, you, by, by the way, you define what Muslim is on its ambiguity, you define what truly what Muslim means, okay? And then you went into a specific uh, one, one, trying one, to prove. One, yeah, one, one second, one second. I just wanted to ask for a couple of clarifications because I do I do want to understand I do want to understand your point before you uh, before you move sure. on to another one. But so you, you're you're saying that we uh, in in your definition of of Muslims as people who submit to God that we would be Avery and I would be Muslims. Um, just, just to clarify, I'm assuming you're going, I'm assuming you're going to say yes. Uh, but Sunnis, Shias, Sufis, these would all be Muslims and that they are submitting to God, but you would believe they're misguided in certain ways, but they would all be Muslims, right? There's, they're Muslims, but they're not believers. They have not entered the faith and the belief. They've submitted that there's a God, but they're going to do whatever they want. So there's people that disbelieve. There is no God. That's an atheist. That's a person that not, did not submit this as a criminal. And there's people that understand that God exists, but they want to purposely devout, uh, devout the way outside of the way of God. Those are devils. But then the submitter is, there's a God, there's a day of judgment. That's that's, that's so where it stands. So you, you would say, so regarding us, you would say, would you say that we are Muslims, but not believers? 
you're a Muslim without, you're not believers, and you have uh, concepts of shirk. God never refers to you as mushrikun. God refers to you as people who are committing disbelief by the association. You're but he never called you a mushrik. By name, Christians were never called uh, mushrik. But he's saying, hey, when you're saying God is a one of a third, you're committing disbelief. When you're saying that Jesus is the son of God, you're committing disbelief. But he never said you are a mushrik. Because a mushrik is much bigger than that concept. So Got yes, it. everyone, everyone in the world has some concepts of shirk in their iman. They're told they're associating things with God, and in return, their life has moves away from the clear path a little bit, and the, mm -hmm. the, and that's because it's not forgiven. So you're gonna eat it either here in the world or the hereafter. Some people so, are just completely gone. So, what do you think so, about that, Avery? I I think it's I think it's interesting. You're a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. We're all Muslims. Uh, so mm -hmm. so you know it's a it's a Muslim party here. Is so, but, but, I, but he, are you ready? Are you ready is, now? He's, he's, you... He said, he said, well, I, I, I still want to examine this. I, I still want to, like, we got to dig deep in this, man. Um, so you said, like, uh, you know, for those who say that Jesus is the son of God, that they are, uh, we're, we're, we're disbelievers for saying that, but we're still Muslim. So, my question is, yes. uh, is according to the verses that you quoted, uh, is Jesus, he's a Muslim, but he's a disbeliever? Avery, to answer you very quickly. Do you submit that God is controlling this world? No, no, no. That's, that doesn't answer my question. That doesn't answer my question. Answer, I am going to answer your question. So, so, I'm asking so, you simply, I'm, simply yes or yeah, no. That, do that you, doesn't answer. Do you, no, you, I, my, do you accept that I'm God sorry. is controlling this world and there's a day of judgment? I, I, I'm yes sorry. or no? Sure. sure. So can okay. you answer my question? So now, now? to answer your question, right, there have on, been... Just a, just a, it sounds like Avery has a question for you too. No, no. I, I he, he said he's about to answer. I understand the question. Yeah. So there's people that messed up in the religion. Prior to Jesus, Jesus came to fix the religion. After Jesus, people messed up in the religion. Muhammad came to fix the religion. That's not what and I asked. After Muhammad, people... No, I'm telling you. So when G, when you're claiming that Jesus said that he is the begotten son of God, that is not something that Jesus would say. I didn't... Okay. So let, let's, let's pause here for a second. You, I'm talking about the verses you quoted to prove to us in our Bible that Jesus is a Muslim. So I'm not talking about what you think is corrupted. I'm talking the parts that you quoted as if they're not corrupted. So then you're you quote, talking to to Shai, but I quoted only two verses: no, five thirty okay, so and twenty two twenty one. Exactly, and you said out of you said out of your mouth. I heard you. It's recorded in your verses. You read that Jesus submits his will to the Father as he hears, he judges, and he submits his will to the Father. So Jesus right. in John five thirty. In John chapter 5 says he's the son of God and he submits to his father. I'm going to ask again. So according to the verses you quoted, is Jesus a Muslim but a disbeliever? 530. Jesus has said he submitted his will. People saying that he's the begotten son of God, that is something that Jesus did not say. I, I, no, 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 no. Let, let, yeah, let, let me clarify this, Avery, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think he's missing the point. So he's not saying what you what you believe or what Islam teaches. Avery is asking since G, since you quoted John chapter five verse thirty, and that's where Jesus says that everything that the Father does, He does, and that you have to honor the Son the same way you honor the Father. He's Avery is asking: Is Jesus in this passage? Even if you believe, even if you believe it's corrupt, but, but I, is he in this passage? It a Muslim, but not a believer, because he's saying that, that he's David. the son and you have but, to honor him the same way. But Dave, uh, Mohamed, wait, Dave, the, the John chapter 5, verse 30 doesn't say what you just said. That's not the verse we used. So what I used, what point are you making from uh, that? Okay, so let, let's do, let's, it's he's, very Wait, simple. wait, wait, wait. Did, didn't Muhammad say he brought up uh, John 5, 30? Yeah. No, I brought, yes. I brought John 5, 30. No, no, I, both of you did. Both okay, so both you did. did, but it doesn't say anything about. It doesn't say what you are saying. It doesn't okay. say what you, David, is saying. Yeah, we're so, talking. We're talking about the rest of the passage. Let me give. Let me just give a a, a breakdown of what's actually going David, on David, in David, that David, passage. I, promise, but, I understand what you're saying, but let me answer okay. very quickly. So not answering. we do not. We do not subscribe that the gospel is a hundred percent truth. So we're yeah, we're not saying that. We're asking are, about but, according wait, 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 to wait, the minute, passage. One minute, David. We're quoting the things that are aligning with the truth and the things that are not aligning with the truth. We are here to help you correct it with the criterion, which is the Quran. So that's no, why Jesus that's why we're saying, saying we're not saying we know you we yeah, we know you believe that Jesus said other things. We're saying 
according to this passage, would the person who is saying these things, saying that he does whatever the Father does, someone who says that he's the one who raises the dead at the resurrection, someone who says that uh, that you have to honor him the same way you honor the Father, this, the, where he says that he is the final judge of all mankind, would a person who said these things in this passage be a Muslim but not a believer? Two points. One, one, that I'll bring you back to an earlier debate where we had, Ooh, where yes I told you no, Jesus, can, Jesus can speak in the first person. And then the other thing is, just like how you're saying there's ambiguity <sighs> with how the son is defined. Yes the Jews or no. Define one second. The Jews define the son in a different way than you defied the son. David was a son of God. Uh, there's Benu Elohim, the sons of God. There's Ooh. many sons of God in the Bible. So when you're taking it as a begotten son, that's when you went off course. But it doesn't necessarily say that Jesus was saying, I am the begotten son. I my, my father had a certain relationship with my mother, and here I come without a father. That's where it's the problem. Exactly, dude, dude, exactly. Dude, dude, dude it, it's, it's, it's very simple, man. We didn't ask you all of that. We don't need the fluff, seriously. Answer the question. Yeah, but by your like, question, this, this some, some excuse, questions. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I can't do this. Dude, uh -huh. do what? it's very do simple. What? what David asked you and what I asked you, it's super simple. According oh, do to you the take text, the gospel 100% please, please, or just please, a little bit? Me. That's what you're it's, saying. It's, it's very simple. Please, it's very, very simple. Is this person who's claiming to be the son of the father, who can do whatever the father does and uh, is honored the same way the father is honored, who raises the dead and judges at the day of judgment, is that person a Muslim and but not a believer? Yes or no? He's not a Muslim. Thank you. Whoa, Whoa. beautiful. Jesus, Jesus in so Jesus in John chapter five is not a Muslim, but you quote John chapter it five is, to show wait, that wait, Jesus wait, wait. is a Muslim. David, understand David, the context. David. Don't wait, wait one moment. Don't twist the issues here. Don't twist it. David. Yeah, we're it not is, the one twisting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, David, no, no. Don't you Every, twist wait. it? No, no. Don't interrupt. I, don't I'll interrupt, try not please. to. Please, gentlemen. All right, all right. Every. we're gonna go with Shuaib for about one minute. Then we'll go back. Go ahead, Shuaib. <laughs> Every you are playing the semantics here. Look, Matthew Everything. chapter 24, verse 36, it tells you clearly Jesus says nobody knows the day of judgment, right? Now, if you are trying to base twist issues and base it on an issue to ask Muhammad a question by trying to put him in one corner which, with a contradictive question, that is nonsensical. What I'm trying to let you know right now is if you go to John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus says, I ascend to my father, your father. And to my God, your God. But if we understand and we quote certain passages where, where he's mentioned the father doesn't actually denote that he's the begotten son. But you are trying to put it in a nutshell by questioning Muhammad that, oh, if Jesus claims he's the son and he is this, he is this, does that make him a Muslim or a believer? But that, 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 is, that is a nonsensical type of question to ask. Based, okay. Look, based on chapter 5, John chapter 5 verse 30, the passage we quoted, if you have to base it on exactly the context we, we quoted, it says, I can of myself do nothing. As right. I hear, I judge. So it means he's doing the will of the Father. This is what James. we quoted as the reference. Beautiful. Take it over five to... seconds. Beautiful. Okay, five seconds. Oh, hold on. I, sorry to, I just want to keep going back and forth between teams. We'll have you go right after Avery. Avery, 60 seconds. I, no, I, I, okay, within the 60 seconds, please. Shwaib. Uh, is is Allah a father? Yes or no? He's not a father. Thank you. So if someone is claiming that Allah is their father, then they're not a Muslim, correct? You have to understand the perspective on how he's it's, using the word father. If it doesn't you matter. Father, is it biological? It, it, no, so, I can, so, wait, 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 wait. Clarify the point first. Sure. Okay. Biological sure. father. Rabbi is very spiritual easy. father. Very no, easy. no, please, please. Let me just ask it. Let me. Is Allah the father? In any sense, no. figuratively, no. allegorically, any sense. No, he's no. not. No, no. Okay, you. so Shaiba, it doesn't matter. I have a question. Shaiba, Just, I have a question. Wait, wait, wait please. It's wait, the person wait, that wait, is okay. defined in the guys, But if it was relax. 60 seconds, I do want to give a uh, chance to either you finish, and then we'll yes. go right over to you, Muhammad. All right, thank you. So look. So you just, both of you just said that Allah is not a father in any sense. So it doesn't matter in what sense Jesus claims to be the son, whether it's begotten, whether it's allegorical, in any sense, if you claim to be the son of Allah, you're not a Muslim. I'll, I'll hey. end my point there because I'll, I'll let you guys, you know, you do your thing. Hey. You guys just cooked yourselves, man. Shuaiba. No, you, we didn't. This is how we cooked. started you sound. Shuaiba. We are good chefs. Shuaiba. We are doing cookouts. Brothers, 
Shaiba, <laughs> is the person that's mentioned in John in its entirety, was that Jesus speaking? Yes or no? Is that, was is the that person in the whole in the whole thing, just like how the prophet in the hadith, is that Muhammad? Absolutely. Is the person that's quoted completely in John, the one that they're quoting, was that Jesus in his entirety? Yes or no? Uh, Shuaiba, yes or no? Oh, the Shuaiba. Oh, okay. Yeah, Shuaiba. Is that person Jesus or not? No, he's not. And hey, ooh, we win. Wow, we got well, it. Of course. <laughs> they, they know that. They know that. They are trying that's to That's how semantics. stupid you sound, no, Avery. No. The person that is completely in the John, the true quote, that is not Jesus completely speaking. And this is what you're doing late earlier. Oh, so the person that's in Sahih Muslim, is that not the prophet then? If I said no, oh, we won. Exactly. We won, you're dumb. <laughs> the person uh, that is saying that he's the son of a God or that he came, he is equal with the father, that is nothing from Jesus. And we're here to tell you that if you have submitted to the Lord of the world, the skies and the earth, you are saying complete blasphemy to put someone as weak as a human, as an equal to who created you and who can destroy you, who saved Jesus from the cross. Do you understand that? Jesus yeah, couldn't so save himself. Yeah. So here's here's the uh, here here's the here's the points we're trying to make. So uh, in, in response to our discussion of John five thirty, uh, uh, Shweb pointed out he went to John twenty where Jesus says, <laughs> "I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God." So notice even the verse itself, you go, you guys both agreed would not be Islamic, and yet you're quoting it to defend your point that Jesus was a Muslim. But it's even crazier if you if you keep if you keep reading. No, no, no. Because in, no, no, no. If in, yes, I'll read whatever I want in verse twenty two. Same passage. Same passage. A couple verses later, it says Jesus breathed on them, on them and said, "Receive the Holy Spirit." Oh my goodness. That that ties in with the last debate. But then just a few verses after that, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting, Shuaib and Muhammad, and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Our point is that you keep quoting passages to show that Jesus is a Muslim. And if you simply keep reading, there's no way he's a Muslim. So you're saying, ah, but the one verse that we agree with, that's the real Jesus. But the rest of it, which completely contradicts Islam, uh, no, that's all that's just made Jesus. up. That's yeah, not that's Jesus. not Jesus. <laughs> At, right, notice, we, we, passage we after that. passage after passage you quote, and Aaron. all literally all you have to do is read before it or after it and it shows that jesus David, can't possibly be Muslim, ridiculous. according to you how many times in the bible have you put the prophets in a in a light that is not true so aaron said that he built a different cow talk notice changing people. the topic no, no 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 i'm not changing building the topic. a cow aaron the building a cow everyone yeah, yeah, no, no, he no, built a cow Dave, for people let him to finish. be mushriks, and then Solomon, Solomon worshipped women, and he also worshipped fake deities, so it's not very hard for these authors, like Paul the Apostate, Saul the Apostate, that he wants to... He's a Muslim, he's a Muslim, keep it on. Apparently, hold on, hold on. no, 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 because in your own book, it says that if you kill an innocent soul, like you kill the whole world, how many innocent souls no, did doesn't. he kill? Oh, and then all of a sudden, he's a messenger, that's when say you that. get Sorry. deluded. That's, well, that's in the Talmud. Talmud. The Quran gets that from the Talmud. That's the Talmud. The that's one of the problems from the last debate. The Muhammad didn't know what he was quoting. But guys, but so, guys, you, so you don't book, agree that. Your book, your book of authority, you've taken verses and other books out of your books. We're only and, quoting look, what you said. Look, you no, said no, it. No, you no, said, here's the chapter. You are, we go wait, wait, from Shuai, wait, 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 wait. You are taking our words out of context. Like I you, like, I keep saying that's you. High, that's you, ironic, a game of semantics. What? How ironic. We're what? taking what? them what? out what of ironic? context, Avery. Oh, so you are doing the same thing, huh? Okay. So the so point we're, is... We're, we're only no. going to do what you do to Jesus. That's all. Okay, you let me yeah, speak up. Yeah, they're, they're giving verses, so and we're quoting okay, the let context. Let's hear from... Let okay, let's give let it full 60 yeah, yeah, seconds right. to show up. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So what we are doing is, when we quote passages from your book, we are quoting passages and showing you if we have to use logic to understand the concept you have in your book by that logic... This is how A falls in the criteria of being a Muslim, a submitter to God. But you are taking all the chunks you have, which you know some verses in your book are interpolated. They are not from God. Neither are they from Jesus. They are people's opinions. You are trying to add up to make a point. 
we are not using people's opinions in your book. We are quoting passages where Jesus is making references about who God is or what he is here to do. But then you just quote verses out of context and say, we are making claims from the same book. Then what is the idea of the debate? The idea of the debate is to go inside your book to make sense out of a passage where we can actually have it in the context of our own books to prove to the people. That's what we are doing. So it's not as if we believe in the entirety of your book. No. Can I can I say something here, David? Sure, sure wait. Notice how my man and, and, and Muhammad, this is for you too, but for, for both of you guys. Notice how we never quoted a single passage or talked about a single passage that you didn't quote yourself. We're only using the context of the passage that you use. That's it. So it's no, if you want, not true. if you're not trying true. to say, sorry, if you're trying to say that we're taking your words out of context, bro. Dave, Dave Listen, said I quoted. He is, said, like, like you might as well just not say anything. How about this? I, don't quote the Bible anymore. Just give up on the Bible. Just admit that according to the Bible, Jesus is not a Muslim and try to use something else to prove it. Because you can't, you, I, I, according to the Bible and the passages Look. you guys go to, you've already admitted Allah's not a father. A Muslim can't call Allah a, a father and be a Muslim. Jesus says that he's the uh, that he's the son of God, and so therefore he can't be a Muslim. According to the passages y'all quote, so stop quoting the Bible. Try to use something Avery. else to prove that he's no, a Muslim. I think, I think you need to understand something. We're quoting a certain verse, and you go, "Oh well, carry on with the other bullshit." Exactly. That wrote. Exactly. That's the problem. We're not talking about the other nonsense. Now Look. here's the thing, God logic, <laughs> Mister Avery. So can you please now tell me that David is the son of God? Because if you oh. go to Psalm two seven, oh. if you go to two, Psalm two seven, he goes, "I will." Proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, David, please, You are me, my son. Today I have become your father. So is David the son of God? Uh, David, David is the son of God, which proves that he's not a Muslim. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 not a so, so now why yeah, watch not this a Trinity? Show. But but hold on. He but doesn't please, get please. it. He doesn't get it. <laughs> he doesn't funny. get it at all. But but the audience gets it. Let me show you. Let me show you, Muhammad, how silly, how silly your, your procedure is here. Um, so you David's only want to stick to specific wait, please. You only want to yes stick. Yes or no? Is David a son bro, of God? Oh, relax. Oh my please. goodness. R relax. Say it. We let yes we let you no. talk. Yeah, we let you talk. Well, I just want. It's you a only. Oh my goodness! To... He's gonna let him break it down. Yeah, yeah. This is is it simple. yes or no? Is David dude, a son dude, of God? Uh, dude, David seriously. is a son of God. Yes. Yes. Thank you for and your answer. And, and we and we're about to clarify things for you. Yes. And they're all contradicting Islam. Yeah, all of all them. All of them. Go ahead, Avery. So look, so David is a son of God. No, we're not. David is a son of God, which means David is not a Muslim. That's in the Psalms that your Quran says that is from God, that he wrote himself. Chapter 21, verse 105 of the Quran, uh, Allah says in the Quran that he's the one who wrote the Psalms for David. So Allah is the one writing that David is his son. Stuck for the law. Look, we're going with your, exactly. with your Well, no, wait, wait, you are, you are yeah, misquoting please, the Quran, please. bro. Please, I want to get to my point. I want uh -huh. to get to my point. So... Your whole procedure is let's forget all the surrounding verses, only stick to the verses that we mentioned, Avery and David. Okay, let's do that. You quoted John 5.30. It simply right. says this, ladies and gentlemen, I can do nothing on my own as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me, period. Muhammad, who's speaking here? This is Jesus. How do you know that? Speaking. How do you it's know? It's submitter. Show That's me, show me in the verse where it says Jesus is speaking. This is not a gospel about Jesus. What? Wait, show me where it's about gospel about Jesus. Is this is this a gospel about Jesus? <laughs> a Avery is pointing. Aver no, Avery is pointing. Avery is pointing out that this is a passage. Doing. This is a passage. Like, You're going to the last verse of a passage. I, How do you know I that that verse it. is even Jesus so, because of the David, passage? But the passage completely contradicts Muhammad and the Quran. David, because you have your whole, you have your whole document. Some of it is from Jesus oh, and some of it is document. bullshit. So we have, we have, yes, yes. The thing if you, if you, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't, it's very simple. If so you're I saying, John, if you're saying, no, if you're saying verse 21 through 29 are not saying, from Jesus, how do you know the next one is from Jesus? Because I have a criterion, which is on his desk right there. I compare it to what the Quran says and the Quran supersedes the lies. Now, if you say that David is the son of God, so David is also the first and last. And hey, son Abraham of God. also submitted. 
Uh, yeah, and then so Abraham also said, I can explain to David, that. And that David, I don't need your explanation. If you're going yeah, you, yes, you, you do. You is. absolutely do because you have no clue I what you're don't. talking about right now. And I can clarify it for you. You can walk away more knowledgeable than when you walked into this discussion. No, I can break David, it down. Just simple. let me break it down. I'll break it down. If I can't break it down, then then you can you can no, say, no, no, hi, you're an idiot. Very, you, you are an idiot. So the, the thing well, your your prophet's a, saying, your prophet's a child molesting, murdering rapist. I didn't talk about. I didn't, you, I didn't talk about. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, fine. You know what? We're name calling. Name calling. Okay. Okay. No, that's good. Anyway. That's good. That's good. That's All right. We're, we're, we're good. We're good. Take it back. No, we're good. We 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 agreed. We 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 agreed, James. We we've settled the issue. Okay. So here's the thing. So if you're going to define what a son is by what Jesus said, what a son is, and then the word son is used by David, then we have to go by the same understanding. You can't come here and give me mental gymnastics. How it's different. Okay. True. So, so, and can yeah, you please take the back the words back you said about my prophet? Because I didn't insult any of your prophets. No, 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 ain't none of that. So hey, it's not can, about you, man. No, you, no it, let, it it, let him me. take the West back yeah. first. No, no, no you, I took no, my words it, back. I apologize no. for David for calling him an idiot. That was okay, out of line. Anger, to I'm sorry. Because that's David, can you please yeah, take yeah. Your words back? I'm not asking you to apologize. Just yeah. take the words back that you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was, I was, I was only, I was only reacting to name calling. So if we're, if we're agreeing, we're not doing that. Yes, I take it back. Thank All right. So, so please, okay. please, I want, I want to touch on this because I don't you, you completely ran away from the point. So you said to forget everything in the passages. You, you literally called it all that other nonsense. So we're only going to stick to the passages you quote. You said that you use your your Quran as a criterion. So where in your Quran does it say that John 530 is Jesus speaking? Based on based on your question doesn't mean. We should give you direct answer based on the way you are questioning. You say, where does it, where in the Quran does it say John 5.30? That is nonsensical. Oh, okay. So look, you know what, Shawaib? I agree with that. Do you want to know why it's nonsensical? Because the claim was nonsensical. When asked who is speaking here, and he says, well, we believe Jesus is speaking here because the Quran is the criterion. Okay. Show me where the Quran tells you that this is Jesus Avery. speaking. You can't That's do it because it's not okay. Every, every, so, every, so every help wait, us let, out. Let me land. Every let help me land. us out. Who is speaking? Let me, land. let me land, please. Let me land. So I'm going only with uh with Muhammad's criteria of 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 hermeneutics of exegesis. I'm going with Mah with Muhammad. So he said, get rid of all the other verses. Only focus on the passages that we quoted. So he quoted only John five thirty, which he said. So tell me again, who is the one speaking who says, as uh, I do nothing of my own, as I hear, I judge, who is speaking? God, logic, I think you are misunderstanding what I'm saying, is that when I am taking a document and I'm reading the document in its entirety, whether it's theology or outside of theology, even if it's the American Constitution, I go put it back to my criterion, which is the Quran. So that means if the verses that are applying with the Quran, I will substitute that and I will accept from, from it. And the things that do not align with the Quran, I will overlook them. So the verse already clarifies, or the, the passage gives us some context that Jesus is speaking and what it's about. The things that are pertaining to what a Muslim is, the definition of a Muslim, I use that to show you that Jesus himself described what a Muslim is. And then you went to talk about how he committed shirk, and so therefore he cannot be a Muslim. But that's not the point that I'm addressing, because I don't believe that he said that. I know. So, so, so I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna let uh, David take the next point because this is important. Yeah, I, I basically, yeah, I want, yeah, I want to let you finish, and then he can respond. But I wanted to actually explain because this is a common uh, point. Other people in the Bible are called sons of God. So, how do we reconcile that with our claim that Jesus? I just, I just want to clarify what we view for Muhammad and Shuaib. If they want to reject it, they can reject it. But no, I want no, to, that, I want that, to that, clarify. that clearly so, shows so, how contradictory. I'm, I'm to, guys, 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 no. guys yeah, was, go ahead, Abraham. Yeah, thank you. So, this is important. What we just know this is that now all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, we're allowed to use the context to, to find out who the person that's speaking. So we see from the context that Jesus is speaking. Thanks a lot. So now, according to Muhammad, we can use the context, but then use the, the Quran, whatever disagrees with the Quran, falsehood, what agrees with it, that's in, that's good. But according to the context, who, who in the world is Jesus saying that he submits his will to? The Father. Who is he saying that he hears from? The father, according to the context. So even John 530 proves that Jesus was not a Muslim based on the context. So you shouldn't quote it since the Quran is the criterion. John 530 should be out. That's my only point. You just help me with that. Yeah, but necessarily using the word father in John 530, as you keep saying, we have, I even quoted chapter uh, John 2017 to show you where he says, my father, your father. 
and your, my God, your God. Keep it's reading. A, what? I, I keep reading. I already pointed it out. This is this the same passage identifies Jesus as Lord and God. No, it doesn't. Guys, I think you guys yeah, are missing the point. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it does. I already, I already because quoted. the Jesus you are claiming doesn't even know the day of judgment. How can he be God? You're quoting. You're quoting John twenty in that passage. No, Jesus according is called to your my Bible, Lord and my God. Jesus know the day of judgment. No, no, no. no. you're going to a different passage. We're happy yeah. to deal with passages, but we, no, notice I'm every time. You no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm but you're changing. You. You're, cha you you're changing. That? You're changing. No, I'm not because you're changing the subject. If you want to, if I'm you want to deal changing. with no, if you want to deal with this topic and then go on, that's no, fine. Because you but, interrupted. No, so now based on your interruption, you keep quoting a verse when we just keep reading and then you say, "Don't keep reading." You just said Jesus. That's the definition of ripping things out of context. No, I said the no. I said the passage you quoted calls Jesus my Lord and my God. That you brought it that doesn't. passage up. It does. It doesn't. Not the one that that you want me to read again? You want me to read again? Talking, but the one no, that no, 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 right, let's break it in two. I, I do want to break it in two. No, I do want speaking, to break it in two. Break it into maybe 60 minute intervals or not 60, 60 minutes. Intervals. Okay, I'll take the first one. I'll take the first no, one, James. Let me finish first. No, wait, 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 wait. I just wanted to. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You make a point. Uh huh. So let, let, he want, he, John, he's going to make a point, and then I want to address John the previous 20, point. 17, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. So if we have to give, go with the context of this verse, check clearly the words he used. But, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, mm -hmm. and to my God and yep. your God. Now, if you, base, if you base on this logic of this verse, it clearly shows that Jesus is not claiming to be the begotten Son of God, which means they can also be the uh, uh, the, the same God can be their Father and their Father. So it's just a figment of speech. It doesn't necessarily mean He is the Son of God, as you guys are claiming. But bear in mind, your book, the Gospels you are using, is the Gospels according to Saint Luke, Saint Matthew, Saint John. These are people's opinion mixed up with the words of Jesus. And you as keep well. quoting them. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let me go and answer that. So, so a few, so just a, so if you kept reading in the same passage, if you keep reading in the same passage, uh, that's where you have just verse 28, just a few verses after what you quoted. My Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus told them, because you have seen me, you have believed. He counts this as belief, calling him my Lord and my God. But I did want to address this. Um, and it might be a few more seconds, but you guys can respond. There is this massive misunderstanding about son of God. In the Bible, God is father and people can be sons of God in different senses. I'll go ahead and clarify them for you so you understand. Human beings in general are called uh, children of God or offspring of God in a similar sense to what you guys were talking in the, talking about earlier in the previous debate where we're all, we all come from God. So human beings in general can be called children of God. That's Acts chapter 17. And so in that sense, we, we can all be, you, you guys are sons of God. Uh, second, spirit beings are called uh, sons of God. This is in Job 1. Angels are called sons of God. Uh, third, the nation of Israel is called God's son because God produces the nation. So he's the father of the nation. Uh, fourth, the reigning Davidic king. The, 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 so King David and those who were king after him, uh, his descendants, they were called sons of God because they were put on the throne by God and they were to rule under God's authority as God's representative. Uh, Shoaib, you quoted uh, Matthew 5 earlier, and there you have that, that, uh, that, uh, that we, we can be called sons of God. Um, the, here it's people who sort of reflect God's nature will be called sons of God. It's a different sense. The idea is that we have a kind of family resemblance to God when we're serving God. So you have different senses in which God is a father and you have different senses in which we are the sons of God. What we're pointing out is there is a son who is a son who is the son of God in a very special sense, similar to what Avery was pointing out earlier with the with the with the parable of the vineyard where prophets come along, but then finally the son comes and he's the one who inherits everything and has authority over everything. And then we're pointing out that in John chapter five, which you quoted, if you read, Jesus isn't saying, hey, I'm the son of God in this, in just in the sense that other people are the sons of, are the sons of God. He's saying that he's the son that you have, you, you can't you honor the, you can't, seconds? you can't, you can't honor the father unless you honor, you can't honor the father unless you honor the son by do, by treating him the same way you treat the father. This is where Jesus claims that he is going to raise the dead at the resurrection. This is where Speak he claims that he's the final over. judge. So he's claiming to be in a special sense. So you can't say, well, Jesus says he's the son of God. There's other sons of God. Therefore, it's all the same sense. It's not. The Bible's clear on this. This Take is not difficult. Muhammad. 
So yeah, when uh, you're talking about like uh, the definition of what a son of God is in the Bible, you can see that it's inconsistent. So there are different in your ways of interpretation what a son of God is. Now, look, if you want to refer to people as the children of God in that sense where there is no uh, direct begetting, that's on your curriculum. This is what God has revealed to you. God has told us that it's better to not say these kind of things because it can lead to these inconsistencies that you're finding in your book in a point where people are saying, well, no, he's actually the son of God where that's the mother of God. So this is where these issues arise from people not understanding what maybe even even let's let's hypothetically, because I don't know, neither do you. Hypothetically, let's say that Jesus did refer to his Lord as the father. Maybe that was for him in the sense that he understood it, but he's not calling him his begotten dad. I don't believe that he said that, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for saying that. But you are causing, you are causing transgression when you want to humanify, like make God as if he came into a human form. That's the only thing that the Quran is telling you. We're not, we're not. And when you're quoting Bible verses, we're quoting the verses that we understand that would attract you to what we're telling you as if the truth from God. We're not debating you to break your beat your dance. We're debating you so that we could free God and his messengers of the lies that are being said. Not by you, by the people who came before you, which you keep constantly repeating. So you guys can laugh as much as you want. But on the day of judgment, God is going to say 530. Didn't Jesus say that he's a submitter? Yes. Okay, end the story. You, you can't be like, oh, well, keep reading, God, keep reading, God. No, he's a submitter. He submitted yeah, his will to God. That. That's what your verses say. But you're debating which God did he submit to. That's not the point of the debate. Because there's only one God. Your God and my God is one God. <laughs> wow. So, so, so this is what we got here. He just said that it doesn't matter what God you're talking about or who you submit to. That is the point of the debate. Because being a Muslim, well... I think that you and Shuei kind of differ on here because you say that you can uh, have a different theology. You could be a Muslim, but not a believer. You can have different theology. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Shuei um, has that same thought, uh, which is why he was like, what I was asking you based on that is, is a non is nonsensical because it was a nonsensical statement. But um, here's the point. When you look in the Bible and you see that we, God is a father in many different senses this proves that it's not talking about Allah, which you guys are agreed is not a father in any sense. So please do not lose that point. So you just proved to us that the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that Jesus says is his own father, the God that revealed himself to David and Moses and all of them claims to be a father in some sense. And therefore, none of these prophets are talking about the same God that you're talking about. So according to your uh, definition of Muslim, they're Muslims, but not believers. Jesus is a Muslim, but not a believer. But Shuaib said, nah, this Jesus in John 5 is not a Muslim. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think that uh, you guys handed this over to us on a silver platter, man. Not really, because you, you're so, like, you can't see that the every you're confusing feeding me is feeding you. Every you're confusing narrative it is based on the Jesus you presented to ask a question. I'm telling you, it's not a Muslim. But if you are saying, I said the 530, John chapter 530 is not a Muslim. I used that to pre present my argument in the first place. I'm not saying that it's not a Muslim. That That's a contradictive statement here you're using. That's not what I said. It is based on the question you were asking, Muhammad. That is what I answered, not the verse I quoted. The verse I quoted was to actually stipulate, use that to stipulate my argument to just show you that this is the criteria we are using to just show you why he is a Muslim, submitted to God. That's why let I me, let, me, let me say very simply, anybody that says he's a son of God or he's a God, he is not a submitter and he's a heretic. Right. Okay. So, 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 believe, so Jesus, so Jesus, believe, well, one Jesus second, one second, in, let me finish in, the fuck. In the passages you quote, <laughs> okay. God, Jesus is I Jesus is not a submitter and he's a heretic, David. Debate, debate over, debate over. It's over. Go ahead, go ahead, Muhammad. It's over. But, but no, it isn't over because the person that you are calling Jesus isn't the Jesus that I'm talking. You about. gave this, this the, Jesus. Do you I understand? I didn't give it? you this Jesus. Ma, I'm Muhammad, giving please, you. Just, 
Just two seconds. Avery, let me finish the point before okay, you Okay, go ahead. I'll let you finish, but I'm about to expose you again. Go ahead. So, and you're not exposing anything except you're like you're flying your mentality. The thing that is very clear that anyone who claims that he is the son of God, he is no longer submitted to the God of Abraham. So it's impossible for a prophet of God to say that he is the begotten son of God. So the lies that you're attributing to Jesus is not from Jesus. You call Jesus the son of God. Jesus did not call himself a son of God. And thus he stayed a Muslim. You're the one who's committing a disbelief. And if you're saying that someone who's saying that God has a son is no longer a submitter to God, then you guys just took yourself out of the fold of the religion and the creed of Abraham. All right. Thank so, you so when much. you're celebrating on the day of judgment, you're not going to celebrate very long. Okay. Thank you. I'm actually going to be celebrating for eternity, actually. Uh, but, but listen, uh, there's, there's about, um, you know, almost 1,200 people watching now. When you guys get a chance, clip the part earlier in the beginning in their opening statements when they were reading out these verses. And Muhammad himself said, based on John 5 30, see, Jesus submitted his will to the Father. He's a Muslim. You out of your own mouth said that he submits his will to the father. So guess what? According to you, Muhammad, Jesus is not a submitter. The Jesus you presented to us is not a submitter. He's a heretic and he's not a Muslim. The debate is over. I don't know what even we're doing. Avery, I'm using okay. a communication language. I'm using a language you would understand. I don't think he is the father, nor do I subscribe him to the father. I used your book against you. But you, th yes, the, day, the debate <laughs> is over because you already admitted that Jesus submitted his will to the father. The father is Allah. End of story. Thank you very much. Every Christian Arab will tell you the same thing. The father Jesus is Allah. submitted his, 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 his will to Allah because they speak Arabic. Allah is not different. They even call Christian, they even call Jesus Allah. Just this is where you're every you're, you're every every I'm listening to Shway. Go ahead. I, according to you, is Jesus the first and last son of God? Uh he's the firstborn son of God in the sense that he is the he has preeminence over all creation. And and he calls himself then, the first and, and, and he calls himself the first and the last in Revelation one. Mm -hmm. but then how come Exodus chapter 4 verse 22 claim that Israel is my first son? We just so, explained. Oh we, I gosh. just, I literally just explained it. It uses different senses. If I say so-and-so is the father uh -huh. of modern. So it no, is no, 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 wait, let, let, let me, no, 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 let see? me, let, let uh -huh. me explain. If I say okay, I am, if I say I am the father of five sons, that's one thing. If I say so-and-so is the father of modern mm -hmm. medicine, that's a different. If I say these are the founding fathers of the country, I'm using father in a different sense. You guys are somehow saying that there's there's no way to use father David. and son in a different sense. That is insane. But How David, can, the Bible uses it in different ways, and you're David, saying, no, you can't do that. Of course you can. It's not my opinion. No, but it's all over the Bible. Who it's said all that? over the Bible. Where did Jesus tell you this? Just just, just really quick, too, on, yeah. on top of this. So it doesn't say first son. It says firstborn. And the term firstborn, as David has just explained, and as I explained, and as we both Can explained, you quote the verse? If quote we the fuse verse. together, we'll, we're speaking at the quote same time. Quote the verse. Literally, That's the nation, the nation quote, he brought forth. Quote the exactly. verse. Oh, oh, no. oh, my Shway, goodness. Shway, 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 respectfully. You got, Avery, you you're going me. to a different topic. No, I said not, quote the verse. They brought it up. Wow, you guys brought it up. Where does the now, Bible now, now, David, I'm off topic. Sons. Just to, okay, you're off topic. But just because yeah, over and over I, again, I they bring up a it, topic, we respond, and we're off topic. We're off topic. <laughs> Once in a while, I got a quick jump in. Uh, yeah, good. We might actually this. It's an opportunity to go to Q and A, but I know that you guys still have some threads you might want to draw together. Four different um, threads. <laughs> yeah, we could. We could. I don't know. We could go to Q and A and then uh, and then have conclusions in the end. But I mean, I'm just one guy, so everyone gets a vote here. Everybody else, yeah, are there I, any like thoughts that you still feel like, hey, I want to flesh this out a bit? Yeah, we, we we've done yeah. SS. We've done SS of the time. So let's let's just go speak up, skip up. Yeah, I, I was, I was interested page. to find out where the Bible is defining the different sons for us to understand, or is it David's understanding? Uh, David's is it understanding. The church fathers, or is it the Jews' understanding? No, no, no. It it, it explains is it. Somebody's it, when it, understanding. When it explains. Or is that what understand? Okay, never mind. I won't answer. This one coming in from, we're going to jump in. I want to say thanks for your questions. This one coming in from Stupid Beta Energy says, how do historical and archaeological sources about Jesus from his era align with the Islamic view of him as a Muslim? So she's asking for historical and archaeological sources that suggest that Jesus is a Muslim. Uh, that doesn't go with historical reference. Submission is about between you and God. So it's not like an historic thing that 
people can just use history, historical things to just tell you this is what shows that he said it's a, it's a yeah. Muslim. It's about what the scriptures say concerning the faith. That is what you denote what a prophet or a messenger of God represents. It's based on that we are denoting that this entity is a Muslim, but it's not based on other historical evidences. No. Yeah, I, I would I would say that uh, it, by the by the time uh, Jesus rises from the dead, there are two categories of people. There are people who are rejecting him. Uh, they're doomed, according to Islam, because they're rejecting a prophet. And there were people who are bowing down and worshiping him as Lord. They're doomed. So the the me the takeaway message for his followers, as we read in the scriptures, is that he's the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. If that wasn't what he preached, then he is the worst communicator in all of history. And he was a miserable failure, according to Islam. You got it. This one coming in from Joshua Wooden says, how many prophecies in the Quran? How many prophecies in the Bible? Torah and Gospel. The Quran affirms the Torah and the Gospel? Yes, they, we are told to believe that they are from God. But as Shaiba says, believing in something doesn't necessitate that you have to follow it. There are prophecies that are in the Bible that we've seen come to life. There's prophecies in the Quran that we've seen come to life. You exactly. got this. And, 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 also, and also the understanding of what the actual Torah and the Gospel are is not according to the saints that we see, of course, most of this thing are, things are interpolated, not the entirely what is referenced in the Quran to be the authentic source coming from God. According to Quran chapter 3, verse 3 to verse 4, the Torah and the gospel reference there, the genuity of it now doesn't exist in the books they are claiming they have. And yet Allah says no one can change his words. This one Child from Anwar Stevenson, thanks so much. I don't know if this is meant to this is a uh, just came in they said did didn't jesus call a canaanite lady a dog is this in something earlier in reference to like this no it's got nothing to do with anything we're talking about okay it, it's this, yeah and we we also like me as a person who believes in jesus I, I should denounce those words i don't think he called anybody a dog this one from michael darwin says christian means christ follower muhammad believed jesus was a prophet so in a sense Muhammad was a Christian too. Isn't this the same argument? Yeah, never, yeah. not at all. Of course, it don't is. you I have could to? I can even, wait, I can even, I can even. Don't oh, you go have ahead, to go say? Go ahead, go ahead. No, don't you no. have to say that for you to be a Christian, you must believe that Jesus died on the cross. So for him not believing that Jesus died on the cross, he's no longer a Christian, as you guys do. He's not exactly. he didn't yeah, yeah but you you guys are laughing you're making our exact point right so you no, take so christian well, actually, you take no, no, you no, take no. christian if no, you just no, mean no, follower no. of jesus you guys admit that you guys are the ones who said that jesus is uh, that jesus uh played a role in sending muhammad so uh, you could say that he's a christian notice as soon as that was brought up you start saying no there are all these other requirements for being a christian David, that's what we're saying about a muslim you can't David, just say here's the etymology and leave out all the requirements for actually being a muslim Here's the thing. So Muhammad is not a Christian and Jesus himself was not a Christian. Muhammad was a Christian. Exactly. All the sources were corrupted. I'll just go to all the verses in the Quran that fit with it. Fine. With, that fit with Christianity. That's okay, do that. all the, and you, I'll say all the rest were corrupted. Dave, Dave do Jesus that. Right now. Can you do that? Oh, sure. Sure. The Quran says that Jesus is the word of Allah, but we know what that means according to John 1, 1, which you guys Our keep word. quoting the book of John. That means that he is God. So Jesus is God oh, according to the word. Quran. And ball game muhammad was a devout uh was a devout christian so, so and look, his and the quran was corrupted by later muslims so so, right, so this so this what we have so this what we have david we have we have muhammad who was a christian uh, uh but not a believer you know mm -hmm. yeah so he's a christian that's, that's but not a believer he's a christian but not a believer all right let's go ahead. and and he followed uh jesus that is also not a christian but he, he followed jesus who sent him according to you guys guys who just does jesus know the day of judgment <laughs> Well, I mean, according to the Quran, the which we are, according to the Quran, he's no, God. So according yeah. to your book, according so to your prove book, it. Then point. prove it, Dave. Dave, you said he knows. I just it, so said it. It's, it's according to the Quran. He's God. And, no, oh, give me according to Bible. Give he's me the word verse. of Allah. He's the word give of Allah. Give me a verse where he knows the day of judgment. Exactly. Okay, John, the word of Allah. John, 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 John chapter so thank sixteen, thank you. John chapter sixteen, verse thirty. He just conceded. John chapter sixteen, verse thirty. John chapter sixteen, verse thirty. Jesus says he knows all things. He just quoted the Quran and he said that Jesus would know the hour, but he knows all things. So no, we're we're showing. He doesn't know when the hour. Yeah, we're showing. Hold on, because Muhammad was a Christian. Avery's Avery's trying. It's got that mic issue. Go ahead, Avery. 
No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, the, you know, according to their theology, according to the Quran, Jesus is the divine word of God, so he knows all things. According to John chapter 16, verses 31 and down, Jesus says that he knows all things, so of course he knows the hour. So let's move on to the next question. So you, said, from... you said according to the Quran, it says is the I divine the word of God. We just really, we got so many questions I want to they, rush they to. Just, Zane they just says, believed. Appreciate it, Zane they says, just Muhammad believers. just admitted the term Muslim is ambiguous in the Quran. Oops. Yep. <laughs> no, it's not oops. It's very clear that in the Quran, a Muslim can be from the people of the book. It can be from other monotheistic religions, and it can be from the followers of Muhammad. It it, it, Muslim, it was, let me chime in, it is, was based on every claim Muhammad admitted, and every claim, not claiming that the Quran is ambiguous. It's what every said. That's why Muhammad approved that and said, yes, according to you, it's ambiguous. That's right. the point. But here's what we have, guys. Here's what we jump, have, guys. Our in. opponents admitted that the Quran is the word of God. So they have now become Muslim. No, no, only the parts, uh, only the on, no, only the parts we agree with that were stolen from Christian sources because Muhammad was a devout Christian. So, so and you then agree his, the and then, Quran is from the God. The, so the, you agree the, those the parts part, are from the God. parts the parts so that Muhammad copied the parts that Muhammad copied from Jews and Christians. Uh but late, yeah. Uh but no 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 that, that, that's the real God. that's the real word of God, and then his followers corrupted it. Have you agree, Chance? Have you think you had something to say? No, yeah, no, uh, that that was a flat out lie. The saying that um, he did not uh, say that. Yes, the 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 term Muslim in the Quran is ambiguous. No, he he said it in the Quran. He didn't say based off what I said. He said based off the Quran, I was right that the term that the term Muslim is ambiguous. So please do not misrepresent me or your partner. This is coming. There is from. a replay. There is a replay. We watch. Will El Man Man says. Jesus was a Muslim means he would have condoned your prophet Muhammad's actions. The Muhammad who, uh, let's see, this isn't per se about Jesus. This I just want to keep it more on test. Trinity Matrix, thank you for your super, super stickers. Appreciate your support. Nobody's been more excited about this uh, debate than Trinity Matrix. Also, DJ Roll, if I'm saying it right, says, if you pick and choose what to believe about Jesus, how do you know anything about him? What about his language, where he preached or where he was born? Uh, you know, no, normally people are just interested in the things which are not part of what we call guidance. Like people are so interested in, for instance, the Greek Bible, or the Bible we they have now, the New Testament is mainly based on Greek, right? Now, uh, of course, Jesus himself wasn't a Greek. But the point is, people will now try to base emphasis, so much emphasis trying to make points which is irrelevant. The, the idea is, what actually does Jesus have to offer? That is what people should pay attention to. Not not necessarily what he did, what he ate, what he did is irrelevant. You got it. This one coming in from do appreciate it. Hello, right, outsider I... says, of course, Yahweh is the biological father. Virgin birth, the quote unquote seed of the woman, wasn't literally Mary's seed. David, I don't think you agree that Jesus is, I mean, uh, the God is the biological. I no, mean, I don't. I don't yeah, we, we would we would we would agree on that. What Whatever we're talking about with son of God, it is not in a biological sense. So I think we'd be on the same page there. Samir Farsane Good. says, David, all you've done quoting other verses is ref to refute John 530 is prove in all caps that your book is full of contradictions. Proof that it was no. falsified. Thank you. No. Uh, so, yeah, this is actually a perfect uh, opportunity to break it down. So a Muslim will go to verse 30, by myself, I can do nothing and say, ha ha, that lines up with Islam. They won't back up to see what Jesus is actually responding to. You can go back to verse 17, where the entire conversation, the entire point Jesus is making is th there's a debate among the rabbis whether uh, God works on the Sabbath, because Allah, I mean, <laughs> Allah, Yahweh, God, whatever you want to say, uh, upholds and sustains the universe. So is that is that work? And so the rabbi said, uh, yes, God, Yahweh, Allah, whatever you want to say, actually works on the Sabbath. So uh, the rule applies to human beings. Then Jesus in verse 17 says, the father is working and I work too. And they flip out and say, he's claiming to be another God. He's claiming to be another God. He's claiming to be a, an additional God. What are they saying? They're accusing Jesus of polytheism. Jesus goes through this entire passage is him saying, 
I'm distinct with the Father, but as a separate, as if I'm a separate God, I'm not. I can't do anything by myself. Everything I do, I am one with the Father. So he breaks down that he's the final judge. He breaks down that God, the, the Father shows him all things that he does and that he does the same things likewise. He breaks down that he's the final judge over all humanity. He says that you can't honor the Father without under honoring the Son in the exact same way. The entire point of the passage is that he is divine, but not a separate deity. And so when he says, I can do nothing of myself. The, if you read the entire passage, the entire point is that he's not separate. He's one with the Father, but shares his nature and attributes. The Muslim goes to just the last little part, ignores everything that comes before it, and says, see, this is Islam, and it flies in the face of Islam. Yes, he doesn't know the Day of Judgment. No. Changing the topic. But, but here's, here, here's the thing. It's not, not even changing the topics. You, what you said at the start, is actually something that is we're, what we're taught about. He, when Jesus said that the Father works on a Saturday, he's telling the Jews that he did not rest on the Sabbath, that God does not need rest. He did not sit and rest on the day he got tired. So if God doesn't rest and he keeps working throughout the whole week, me as a believer, I'm going to follow the Lord, the example of my Lord and work on a Saturday. So this is why the Sabbath is not endured on you or on Muslims. It's the people that differed. On, about Abraham and said that God rested on a Sunday. So it's it's not necessarily that he is attaching himself to uh, to God, but rather taking God as an example. I seen God bring the water down and break the trees up. I took a bucket and put water on a seed and the tree came up. So I learned from my God. Uh, you, want me to you, me. you want me to respond to that, James? Or <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is a whole different topic now. But you want me to respond to that, James? If you want, really quick. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when, when it talks about God resting from the day, that means he, he does the work of creating the universe. He does the work of creating the universe and stops. But so he rested from his work of creating the universe. Then, then, then you have the work of upholding and sustaining the universe. He gives to man the Sabbath. And Jesus says, I, I'm, not, I'm not under that because since the Father is working, I work too. He's putting himself in the same category with God. And they flip out understandably what are you talking about you're saying hey we all have to follow the sabbath you don't because you're like the father they lost their David, mind you if this if this was G if this was jesus claiming <laughs> claiming to be a devout muslim he is the absolute worst communicator in history with the possible exceptions of uh of allah and muhammad who somehow never mean what they say so this because you don't uphold the sabbath Joshua, now you are attached I hate to do to this it. We just got so many. Joshua Wooden says Arabic is the sister language derived from Hebrew and Aramaic. Came 600 years before Arabic was even made. This one from One Way Apologetics says, question for Muslims. Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11 state, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess to Jesus. Will you bow and confess to Jesus the Muslim? In which sense? Uh, like because the, the, there's no, no clarity. The question yeah. in which sense bow yeah, bow but, and profess to Jesus in which sense that yeah, he is you, what? You've already said that there can't be different senses of different words. So I mean, of the same. When words, when so. did we say that? <laughs> when I pointed out the different uses of the word father and son in the Bible, and you said, "Nope, it can only mean one thing." No, no, no. We didn't say it means one thing. We just said that is according to your opinion. You are trying to explain. That's what we said. Is that we did never say that it only means one thing. No. This one, me and Prom do appreciate it. Save Souls says, if Jesus is Muslim, wouldn't that make the Quran verse that says, on this day I perfected your religion a contradiction? No, it's all based on the context because in it, uh, in uh, in the Quran, Quran chapter context? verse thirteen to fourteen. If you read in the Quran, it tells you all the prophets were submitters to God; they were practicing the same faith, the same deen. So it is not as if when Muhammad said, uh, when Muhammad was told, "This day I've perfected the religion," it is based on Muhammad and his people at the time because he received Islam in the gradual process. It wasn't as if he had it in complete form directly where he can just practice Islam. It was based on inspiration and revelation. So it was based on context and the timeline of his people is told that. It doesn't mean Islam wasn't complete and even in the time of Abraham or Moses or Jesus. No. It, it was interesting that when a verse is brought up, you went to the context, which apparently is the method with the Quran, but we can't do it with the Bible. Yeah, well, that's, that's the issue. The Quran came to correct the Bible. So we don't do we don't doubt what the Quran is saying, but we're doubting some of the stuff what the Bible is saying. Not this a one, single verse of the Quran that says that. This one comes and we don't we don't get confused by the verses of the Quran like you do with the Bible. 
This you don't? Have the Quran. 99.9% of Muslims disagree with your interpretation of the Forget Quran. You don't, get, you don't get confused? I don't represent, a, I don't represent them. Okay, I'm so all, all them. eight of you who agree, you, you're united in your interpretation. <laughs> the, the, yeah, whole no, started, no, the whole no, starting no, five that agree, you know. The whole no no five problem, five. No problem okay. about that. We are not here to represent the majority. Right. You, you are literally representing what the scholars wrote about what Jesus said. We are going exactly with what Muhammad said. And then you're going to make fun of us. You're you know from I hate to do it. We've got <laughs> Lytel says, Muslim guests in John 2017, why did Jesus tell Mary, quote, don't cling to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father? This is a little advanced, but reads Luke 24, 39. Who said this? Who, who's this directed towards? To the Muslim guests. To Okay. And I'm looking up 2439. So 2439. Yeah, that's the, that's what, the, that's what, the what? It's talking about the ascension. But go ahead. You got well, it. What was the question again? Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think I understood. It. I'm not positive, James. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. They're asking about when Jesus said he was going to uh, ascend to the Father, and then you compare it, and it's actually uh, him him ascending in in Luke 24. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We were drawing. Uh, it was just drawing a point from the statement by saying he said, "My Father, your Father." Your, my God, your God. So it was based on the, the 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 statement we used there is what we use for the argument. It wasn't like I'm saying I believe in that statement that this is what he actually said. It is based on the argument for the sake of argument. I use as a reference point. That's all. You guys agree that Jesus That's said crazy. that his father is your father, right? Like he equated them to everybody. Yes, God is all of our fathers. You too, even if you don't know it. This Just Jesus, Jesus is the son in a very different sense. Which means he's not a Muslim. Correct. And, and neither are we. Yeah. Since he's our father too. So you guys believe Jesus is a man, right? Yeah, that, that's, yeah. That, that, that's, all, that's part of the doctrine of the incarnation. Yes. And prophesied okay. in the Old Testament. So he was circumcised. Okay, good. This one coming in from Danny Davis says, Question, Jesus taught his followers to pray beginning with, quote, our father. Was he a Muslim at that moment? Also, did Schweib carry a coat? I don't understand what that did, means. I didn't hear the last thing. Did he carry what? Carry a coat? Carry a coat. I don't know what that means, but yeah, the, you can answer. Is there a scripture yeah, the, verse the first that part. mentions? Is it Schweib carried, I carried what? A coat. A coat? coat? Like a coat, like a jacket. A jacket? Did he, did he carry me? a coat? I don't know what that I means. I don't understand what that means. Uh, I don't know if it was like, a, I'm what? thinking of like. Yeah, he could just answer the first part. We don't understand. Yeah, I don't, I don't know part. what that means. And I'm a shake. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, can you kindly repeat the, the first yeah. part of the question? Say, Jesus taught his followers to pray scholarship. beginning with, quote, our father. Was he a Muslim at that moment? Uh, the, uh, okay, so the person is basing that question based on the Bible, on that statement saying our father. Then we have to now ask David to explain to us what is meant by the father. There. Is it biological? Is it, uh, you know, non-literal? Then we can uh, answer the question. So, Dave, help out. But but you guys, you guys agree <laughs> that, that Allah is not the father in any sense, right? Based on the Quran. So, the Quran so, no, matter, so no, the point is, no matter what Jesus is talking about, the it question doesn't, line that up with doesn't say, listen, the questioner doesn't say I should give any reference from the Quran now to answer from the Quran. Mm -hmm. It is an open ended question. So, it means you have to help out first before we can answer if it's yes or no. So, help me out. Is it a literal father, biological, or whatever, non literal? What type of father is it? Again, all kinds of different senses. If you mean bio, if you, if you if you're taking biological as the standard, then no, it would not be literal in that sense. But in that in, in that verse, Jesus is asked, "How should we pray?" And he says, "Here's how you should pray. You should pray, mm -hmm. our Father in heaven." So, no, that mm -hmm. would not be a biological father. So, in that understanding, if that father is not biological and is not a blasphemous concept of father, then I agree. There's no problem with that. There's prayer. no there, no any concept any statement of Allah being the father is blasphemous according to you guys earlier according to the Quran you cannot come to Allah God. except no no as, wait 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 please wait, let wait, me wait. please let me finish because I I've been quiet uh-huh according to the Quran you uh -huh. cannot come to Allah except as a slave you can't come to him as a father in any sense you guys agreed to this earlier so please stop asking in what sense is he the son or no the no wait wait you already negated any sense so it's, it's over no, we negated which, which, what, we, what do you mean any sense? We just said Quran no, we're, doesn't we're make saying... a claim. That's what we told you. The Quran doesn't give us the chance to say father. That is what we said. But we didn't say the Quran 
negate something? Does it negate what? It, it does. What it it literally negates. It says... Hey, no, they say, they call themselves children of they, God. Okay, look. It says, they say that Allah has a son. Far be it from him. It's it's uh, doesn't befit his majesty. The earth and the and the and the universe quake and they uh the, you know they shudder at such an utterance. You none can come to Allah in the heavens or the earth. Uh, can't come to the most beneficent except as a slave. It's a negation. It's a does, full does negation. It, okay, every according to you, does God has a begotten son? Yes. Oh, good enough. That's that's what that's so what what's Jesus the difference says, between, which means he's what's not a the difference between wait, 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 Avery, what's the difference between a begotten son and a biological son? So the begotten son of Jesus, he's the begotten son in the sense that he is the unique son of God. Monogamous is the word. So he's the unique son of God in that he shares the same essence as the father. That's what begotten or monogamous means in, when it comes to Jesus. But that yeah. is contradiction. So when it comes to biological, when it comes to bi biological and humans, amongst humans, it means that I had, you know, I, I done my thing with my wife and we bore a son. Yeah. That's my okay, biological but, but, child. But, that's, but hold on, I hold on. Him. Now you're, de you're defining words. You define begotten. Exactly. You define shame, shame, on, shame on you as, for defining your, words. No, no, no. But that's what I'm saying. You define the word. That's what you, that's what you do. Some, man. That's how you communicate. Avery, Listen, you just said Jesus is a man. You just you just literally do, said what begotten means. Shuaib, Shuaib, do you, Shuei, do you, do you really not know? Definition you, that doesn't attach to the word. That's the point. So what's the difference between uh -huh. begotten and biological when they're literally like synonyms? They work. The, with they're each not. Other. The, they're that not. Father, father and son are not are, are, are not biological. Open up uh, the uh, dictionary apart, and apart tell me from, what begotten means. Or is English not part of Christianity? We're using we're using biblical. You're definition. using your semantic, own semantic, words. Semantic, you're using your semantic. Own semantic. Things. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Muhammad. The, the 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 Bible uses the term for begotten, although some point out that it can be translated as unique. What we're pointing out that is that no one interpreted that as biological, so it can't mean. You're saying, oh, this can only mean biological. We're saying no one, no one thought it meant biological. See, but, but you're, you're, you're using look, the look, word. look, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're looking at this and saying, hey, you know, a father begets a son. Therefore, if we say that Jesus is the begotten from the father, we must be saying biological because we're like copying uh, human procreation. No, we're the, you, you and I are created in the image of God. We're the copy of an eternal relationship within the divine nature. We're Can the you copy. Show me a source that says this in the English language <laughs> that begotten doesn't mean not, we're, reproduction. We're talking about what the Bible breaks down, man. This isn't- But a, we're using a, a English, English language, buddy. I hate to do this, but you have to go to the next one. Christina Marie like says, question for Shuaib. Do you agree with Muhammad that a disbeliever can be a Muslim? Or do you feel that reduces being a Muslim to nothing? How do you submit to a God you don't believe in? Uh, a disbeliever being a Muslim, uh, I think that's not what Muhammad said. I think that this exactly. question has been twisted. No, it's a twisted form. A disbeliever, the moment a person is classified as a disbeliever, that's not a person who is a Muslim anymore. You that's, exactly, so, that's exactly No, no, no. In another way around, there's a misunderstanding here. He's, so the point is, no. Avery, stop interrupting. I'm so sorry, the point man, is, no, 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 no. Uh -huh, the point is, a, a disbeliever, the moment a person is classified as a disbeliever, that is out of coverage area of being a submitter to God because he rejects God entirely. That's what makes him a disbeliever. He disbelieves right. in God. You understand? So the, based on the question the person is asking, if that is the case, no. The person cannot be classified as a Muslim. All right. Thank you so, so, so thank you so much. Hold on, hold on. It's, it's about it's me. It's, it's about me. Let respond. me also answer. It's for so us to respond. Believers. There's believers it's for us to respond, and right, Holmes? No, the, the question was directed to me. Yes, and we can, and I, and I can respond as the as the opposite side. So, okay, no responding problem. to your comment, uh, again, this is the second time that you contradicted uh, uh, Muhammad and misrepresented his words. He That's literally wrong. said, and he repeated this. Please don't well, interrupt let's, me. Let's let him just finish really quick, and we'll give you a chance, Muhammad. We'll give you Thank maybe you. about another twenty seconds if you can. Yeah, yeah, def yeah, definitely. So he definitely said, and he repeated it. We and we repeated it and and laughed at it because it was so funny that you're a, you can be a Muslim but a disbeliever because your theology doesn't match with Islam. But you submit, you're a believe uh, a, a Muslim. So thank you, Shuaib, for exposing Muhammad and showing that his the his reasoning is faulty. You, I said, one. go ahead, Muhammad. and I will repeat it that people have are submitters. They're Muslims that are committing. Acts of disbelief doesn't make them disbelievers. So, for example, God told us, okay, drinking is bad. Don't drink. 
It's forbidden for you to eat pork. Make it even easier. It's forbidden for you to eat pork. I can still submit to God, try to work with God and be submissive to God. But then if I eat pork purposely, I committed disbelief at that point that I don't believe in God's verses, but it does not necessitate that now I am no longer a submitter. It's I'm committing disbelief. If you keep constantly committing disbelief and then you completely leave the book of God, now you're a disbeliever. So things are not binary, Avery. There's a scale. The more you can make, the more you're going to eat. That's how it works. So you're right. taking me out of context. All right. I, I, again, as you my do appeal, with your Bible. All right. Good. So my appeal to the audience, make sure you guys clip it. Go back to the part where you repeated this. Go to the part where we laughed and then come right here because this is going to be a good one. This is yeah, realm. Is. I do appreciate it. Elyon says it Isaiah is. 9 6 says Jesus is named everlasting father in all caps. Is Jesus his own father, or is Jesus a father in another sense? Uh, yeah, good good point. Um, because notice, uh, here again, we see the use of father over and over again in very different senses. Right there, uh, you have a son. It says, a for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So he's a child, that's referring to his human nature. The son is referring to his divine nature, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So does that make him God the Father? No, the same passage refers to him as the son. But as far as being the creator, you can go back to John 1, uh, where everything is created through Jesus, then yes, he's the father of creation in that sense. Like all Yahweh is the father. Um, and that includes Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in terms of being creator, creating us, uh, Yahweh is the Father. In terms of relationship within the Trinity, yeah, you've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so, just, so, just, so just to be just to be clear with this, so this does not mean that Jesus is the person of the Father. Yeah. It shows that it's talking about his attribute of being the source of eternal life and the source of creation. OK, so he's not the person, the father, but he is the source of eternal life. Uh, another rendition of this in the Hebrew is father of eternity. So, yeah, good breakdown. I hope that's clear for you guys. You got it. We actually don't have too many more left. So bear with me is thank you very much for your super chat question. J Box 12 says question from Muhammad and Shuaib. Where in the Quran do you find the criteria by which you are to judge, interpret scripture? They're saying, like, how does the Quran inform you on how you should go about interpreting scripture? Uh, when you take the, the chapter 3, verse uh, 7 of the Quran, which is uh, an essential part on understanding how uh, the verses of the Quran work in terms of finding interpretation, he says, He, God, is the one who has revealed the book to you, of which are precise signs. They're, they're, they are the source of the book, like they made the main. Uh, source of the book. While other signs are similar, as for those in whose hearts is deviation, they will then follow what is similar thereof, seeking discord and seeking its interpretation. But they do not know its interpretation except God, and then there's a comma in the English, as well as those deeply rooted in knowledge, right? So this, those deeply rooted in knowledge, they will now say, we believe in it, all is from our Lord, but only those of intelligence we remember no so it tells us clearly that part of the people who actually take uh the interpretations because of their deviance was the those deeply written in knowledge which clearly tells us that you have to actually critically study the scriptures at uh, the scripture to know what it actually says before you take it up to follow as it says in quran chapter 17 verse 36 that do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge so by this you have to let the quran do the talking by actually adhering to the clarifications god gives instead of adhering to what the opinion of people that is how to understand how to take up interpretations from the quran this one from dread says the passage muhammad keeps quote keeps quoting from is when allah is speaking to the bedouin the bedouin were believers because allah said they had no faith no, I think he's quoting the verse where God says, don't say you've believed, say you submitted. And when the faith enters your heart, and then at that point, you're a believer. Because uh, you have to first submit to God, and then you have to understand what it means to trust God. Because the word iman in Arabic comes from the root word of emin, which is security and safety. So after you submit to the Lord, uh, you have to find security and safety in him that he is handling everything. He's the one who's taking care of everything. 
whatever befalls you is by his permission. Whatever good comes to you is from him. Whatever things that are mishap is from your own uh, doing. And that way you have submitted that it's all in God's hand. You made peace. And then now when you have the faith in your heart, you're a believer. You got it. This one coming in from Dred says, it makes no sense that those who'd be identifying with the quote unquote true faith would use the same word as those prescribed as faithless. Shalom and peace of Christ to my brothers fighting for Yahweh. Say it makes no sense that those who'd be identifying with the true faith would use the same word as those prescribed as faithless. Is, is that, I don't know what that's talking about. Is that talking about using the word Muslim and applying it to like people who like follow that's the what Quran I'm and people guessing. who don't? I, that's what I'm guessing. Again, God refers to the people who are completely in belief and following the Quran as believers. And submitters is, is, is something of a different degree. And maybe Shraiba can correct me. Yeah, there, there's a there's a different level to that. There's a submission level, and then there's a believer level. The, the the believing level is actually those who actually practice the core of the the faith. Uh, submission level is just you you actually acknowledge and submit to the will of one God, but you might not necessarily be a practitioner of the of the faith, even though you you submit to God, right? So then we have believers who actually practice the faith in its entirety by doing what they are commanded. So for instance, Quran chapter 2, verse 8, among the people are those who say who believe in God in the last day, but they are not actually believers because they don't do the works of that. Just as my brothers here, uh, God Logic and David Wood can testify from James chapter 2, verse 20, and I think verse 26, faith without works is dead. If you have faith and you don't do the works of the faith, your faith is useless. So the level of belief and submission is a, is a, a different uh, levels. Okay. Yeah. This and one going God in from to make this world a better place. This one from Lytel says, My question earlier was messed up. They said, Jesus said in John 20, 17, don't cling to me after his resurrection. And they say, Muslims, why did Christ say in Luke 24, 39, quote, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does, does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. This is after the resurrection. Obviously. Who is it directed to? I, I think I think it's asking so in in the in the Gospel of John, and again, I'm not sure about this. Uh, I think it's I think the question is asking in the Gospel of John, when he says he's going to uh, ascend to his father, this is after his death and resurrection. And then the questioner uh, ties it into Luke, where he's saying, look at my hands and my feet, showing that he was crucified. And uh, I, I'm, ge I'm guessing you guys, since you don't believe in the crucifixion, you're just going to think that these parts were, uh, were fabricated or something. Of course, we, we believe these are the concepts Quran came to correct. So we don't believe in that concept, no. Gotcha. So bring me closer from... to God. Near the end here, this is Elian says, Shu Shuaib said the Quran is not confusing. What does Alif, Lam, L A M, M I M mean exactly? When you take the, the alphabet of the Quran, they are signs like symbols of the Quran. For instance, if you take Quran chapter 27, verse 1, it gives you the similar example by saying, seen. it mentioned and then tells you these are signs of the Quran and a, the clear book. So these are signs, symbols using the Quran to denote because unlike other books or man-made books, Quran is unique on its own having these initials just to denote the symbols of the Quran. And there's no special meaning to say, oh, it means this or that. No. Two more. Joshua oh. Pinkham. And folks, please, no more questions. No, we can't read anymore. You've got these last two. Joshua Pinkham says, Jesus revealed himself to Nicodemus, John 3, said, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the son of man. Could someone read Proverbs 30, verse 4? I think that's where it says, what is God's name? What is God's son's name? I might be wrong about that, but let me check. They say Yahweh is God. Jesus is Yahweh. Let me look at Proverbs 30. David, do you agree that Jesus is Yahweh? I don't think you would associate Jesus to Yahweh, would you? Or Avery? Oh, Sorry. Oh, Jesus is Yahweh. Yeah, I was so wrong. It says, Proverbs it... 30, verse 4 says, who has ascended to heaven and come down? 
Who has gathered the wind in his fists? And, Wait, oh, actually, you know, the, the, it's, the... it's verse five. It says, "What is his name? What is his son's name?" Yeah, you're in the you're in the right ballpark there, uh, James. Okay, so you associate Yahweh to both the Father and the Son and, and the Holy the Spirit. Spirit. Yes, the Christian view is that is that Yahweh is an eternal is eternally triune. He exists from all eternity. So you can reject that, but that is the, that's the Christian view. So, so Yahweh so, yeah. is the pers all three personas in one. All three yes. persons in one essence. Yes. Oh, okay, quick guys. So who is the actual savior? Is it Jesus or the the, the Father? According to your understanding, is it the Father? The, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are all the Savior. But Isaiah forty three eleven says, says I and even I am the Lord. The That's right. And because besides Yahweh, me, there is no savior, I said. Because because Yahweh is one God that consists of three distinct persons. So Father. But we Son, don't we Spirit don't get that understanding from the Old Testament. The yeah, you, do. You, you don't get you, that. You, you definitely yeah, you do. do. You yeah, definitely do. get that and from if, the Old Testament. Give me, if, give me, give me, you, give me a verse. No, no, no. This, this is another debate. But if you want to have this discussion, if you, you want to have this discussion, happy to. I just said a verse. I didn't say discussion. A verse. Yeah, yeah but the, you're starting a, a discussion that we love. It's, it's question on the answer. It's just a verse. I said. We're agreeing to debate. We're agreeing to have a debate on this. Yep. This one from Rocco says, if Jesus Christ, the son, is also the father, did Christ, the son, always exist as the father? Or did the father create a new essence of itself that is Christ Jesus? He is the father, but also isn't? What? Yeah. So, what so this, is a, this is another Quran-only Muslim. Um, and so his, his question already, you know, the first part of his question, is Jesus the father? The answer is no. So that cancels out the rest of that time, uh, that, that question. You wasted your money, bro. This but is you, a, you said so, you said he's part of the Trinity. He's, uh, he's part of the, the the God. Is that not what you said earlier to me? It's a Godhead. So so is Jesus God or not? You, you don't know Jesus. This. You don't know Jesus is God in, in Christianity. I'm asking you. Yes. Uh, father, so father, then he's, he's, father, 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 you're gonna, so you're, gonna you're gonna repeat yourself. You're gonna you're gonna repeat yourself six times. So I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. Go, go Man, back I'm and watch it because we kind of we kind of went through this. Yeah. I'm asking you for clarity. I just it's yeah. a simple question. Right yes. He is not within 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 the divine nature. You have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Son. That that's that's what he is in the Trinity. When you're talking about creating the universe, Father, in that sense, as as you guys were talking about that that everything comes from Allah. We say Father in that sense. Yes, Jesus is Father of Eternity. All things are created through Jesus. So, yeah, David, I, I love this your opinion because it's not from coming from Jesus or Paul or anybody. It, it, you it really, come, it, 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 it really comes read, from Jesus. Read, read Philippians two. It was brought up earlier. Read just read just read John chapter one. You guys quoted uh, the Gospel of John a bunch. Just read John chapter one. Read Genesis. So Jesus, Jesus, read, and, read, read, and you can and you can you, and you can start you can start at Genesis chapter one. Exactly, David. Can I Genesis can I, can first I first. If if I replace the, the name of Father in the Bible and put Jesus, just would the context still be okay and it would make sense? Yes or no? Can, if you're are they if, like interchangeable? If you're, re if you're referring to God the Father, then no, you couldn't re you couldn't replace that with with Jesus. So they're not equal. They're not the like same person. Different persons. Uh, you're, you're gonna you're yes. gonna keep repeating yourself, David. I promise you. You're just gonna then, keep repeating. Guys, I'm not talking about guys. different persons. I'm, no. I'm talking about quality. Are, are we done? Are, are we done? Because we are done. It? I do have to. I do have to say, folks, sorry, I gave you a warning that we can't read any more questions. Feel free to email me at Modern Day Debate. Close your remarks. And, and, and feel, feel free to keep kicking in the super chats. James deserves it. Yep. Good Thanks stuff, James. Um, 30, 30 second closing remarks while you get those super chats. If you guys want 30 <laughs> seconds, I'm open to it. You guys want to? Okay. We, let's see, we started, we'll, we'll do the same order we started with. So given that Muhammad and Shuaib, uh, Shoaib, do you want to get us started? And then we'll move from right on the screen to left, namely Shoaib, Muhammad, then Avery, then David. Yeah, I would like to say to the view that the viewers, thank you also for being present. And uh, this is, you can see the, uh, what we presented forth and let for those who have the intelligence and the logic to actually uh, decipher and see for themselves which one is more sensible and which one is nonsensical and what they have to pick up and follow as guidance. We are here to present the, the evidences we have 
uh, we are not saying uh, we know more than them or do they know more than us, but we have to present forth what the scriptures say so people can take up what they can benefit. And you can see what happened and how, how the game of semantics were played and so on. But I can say kudos to my brothers here, David Wood and God Logic, and also you yourself, James Kunz. Thank you for hosting us and hopefully we get to meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mohammed. Well, um, one thing is the, the the debate topic was definitely interesting. Uh, I think uh, there is a verse in the Quran that says that how people are witnessing upon themselves a disbelief, like comment, committing disbelief. And uh, our opponents, unfortunately, when they could prove that Jesus was not a submitter to the Father, that was something that was exciting for them. But this is not something that's going to be helpful for them on the Day of Judgment. The whole purpose of their religion, from Christians, Jewish, and the Muslim side, for us to make this world a better place for everybody, for all of humanity. Yes, we are discussing things on how that's achieved, and that's achieved by completely submitting total mindset, mind power, everything back to the Lord Mighty. If the Christians refer to him as, uh, as the Father, we refer to him as the God. The, uh, the, the Jews refer to him as Yahweh, which in Arabic is Hayu Qayyum, the everlasting creature, uh, uh, the everlasting being. So that is the, essentially yeah. why we're here. To make the world a better place and jesus taught us how to do that just like how muhammad taught us to do that by submission thank you 30 seconds for avery yeah guys we saw a lot of flip-flopping we saw a lot of uh, contradictions we saw a lot of misrepresentation uh we, we we had the muslims admit openly that there's no way in the world that allah is a father in any sense and also made the statement that whoever claims that Jesus is the son of God is not a submitter and a heretic. Yet they quoted verses that said where Jesus himself says that he is the son and God is the father. So therefore, Jesus is not a Muslim. He's not a submitter. He's a heretic. According to these guys, they gave us the debate. It was over a long time ago. Floor is yours, David. All right. Well, uh, pretty simple. According to the Quran, Christians are supposed to judge by the gospel. Um, we know what that means. The Quran says we have it and requires us to judge by it and to live according to it. We saw where our Muslim friends go when they want to explain what the gospel teaches. And there's no passage they could they could go to where we can't just read in the same passage before it or after it and find that it doesn't line up with Islam. So if the Quran is sending us to the gospel and the gospel contradicts the Quran, um, I, I don't think we can say Jesus is a Muslim because Islam is just an and incoherent position. Time. With that, I want to say thanks so much for watching, folks. Appreciate all of your questions. Thank you to the speakers. They're the lifeblood of the channel. Do check out their links in the description box right now. What are you waiting for? Even if you disagree, it's a great opportunity. You might as well at least understand well what you disagree with. And last but not least, if you want more people to see this debate because you're like, man, I thought that this is very educational, share this video. With that, I want to say thank you, everybody. I will be back in a quick second with a quick post credit scene, giving channel updates and the like. So thanks so much to our guests and folks stick around because we'll be back in a moment.